What's up, guys? Uh, today, uh, well, actually not today. Um, about two or three days ago, the crickets started hatching. But on the first day, you don't really get a lot because you know there's only a couple, maybe like 10, 15. So I'd make the video then because I, you guys couldn't see them. It was kind of hard for me to show you um, what they look like and all that. So now I have a lot more, a lot more. So I can show you guys now. Um, so yeah, here's what they look like. When they first hatch, they look, if only that light would stay there and my shadow wouldn't get in the way. They look, all right, yeah, right there in the corner. Let me try to put my finger there so I can show you guys. Right there. No, it's not going to work out. Anyway, they look like, yeah, you can see it in the corner a little bit. They look like, uh, like little white ants. Yeah, there you go. Oh, that's perfect. Good. You see it right there? Yeah. They look like little white ants. And then after like a day, they start um, looking like black, like regular ants. Like that. And there's a bunch of them. And then um, when you really think about it, after the first day of hatching, you have, you still, even though they start hatching, you still got to keep the their pods moist because when you think about it, these pods were in there for a week and a half. I told you guys to keep them in there. A week and a half, right? So, if you only, if you take if you stop letting um stop uh, giving these pods moisture after the first day of hatching, then you're just cheating yourself out of that rest of the week and a half of those eggs being laid. Cause like let's say we have these pods in here for a week and a half, and the eggs that hatch on the first day, or the eggs that were laid, I mean yeah the eggs that were laid on the first day, that you had them in there for egg laying, so you still have a, up to a week and a half of more eggs to hatch. So, I mean, I left it in there. After the first day, I'd say I only had maybe about that much, like what you see right here. Then, I've gotten all of this. There's tons. There's over... I tried to count. It doesn't look like it at all. But if you really count them... Well, because I think there's some under here, too. Yeah, there's more under there. I'm trying to hide. You see there's more under there. And they're really delicate. Look, I'll just give them a slight little blow and watch what they do. They go flying everywhere. And there's more under here. They're all over the place. They're all under all the pods. They're everywhere. And there's at least... Pss, I, I tried to count after the second day. Today's the fourth day. Or third or fourth day. I don't remember. But I tried to count after the second day. And there was 165 after the second and third day. So, there's got to be at least 200 or so in here. And, uh, so, yeah, it's been, re it's really successful. I like it a lot. I love doing it. All right, so, first, to keep them alive, first thing is, I just wanted to let you guys know, you count, it's impossible to count them all. So, let's say you count a max of 220, right? Once they're full grown, you're not even going to have 220. They're going to die. It's impossible to keep them all alive. They're so small um, and delicate. It's impossible to keep them alive. But I'm gonna show you the best way to get to keep the most most of them alive. All right. So first, for for um, what they eat and then what they drink. First off, you're gonna want tons of water. But you can't give them like a water bowl because what a water bowl is gonna do is they're gonna try to drink from there and they're gonna end up drowning because they're stupid and they're dumb. Um. So what you need is like paper towel, tissue paper, um, anything like that. Soak it in water and put it in the corners of the cage, everywhere you can. Uh, they'll drink from there from time to time. Then you want to give them, uh, uh, from, they'll drink from there from time to time. As they get even bigger, they're going to, all they're going to do is basically just chill all on the ward because water is going to be so important for them once they get a little bit older, which is in probably two weeks after hatching or so. You should probably see them start drinking a lot of water and stuff. Uh, another thing is their food, what they actually eat, not drink. Um, you can take anything that's pretty decently high in protein, like dog food, cat food, um, and crush it up into a really fine powder so they can eat it. Um, you don't want anything too big because they can't fit it in their mouth, and then they'd end up dying of starvation because you don't eat feed them. So what I have here is wheat thins. Um, it's two grams of protein. It's fine for now. Uh, and I just crush it up into a really, really fine powder with a hammer, and it's right there. Um, and they, they eat it. Um, but, you know, they're really small, so it takes them a long time to eat this stuff. But, yeah, you crush them to a really fine powder. 
and then they just take that right in and they eat it up. Uh, so that's what you get for food. And then for heating, you can give them a little leeway on heating because what I do is during the day I have the heat bulb, the infrared heat bulb, and it gets it. I have it. I monitor it. I have a dimmer, so I keep the skate around 85, 90 degrees during the daytime. Um, it helps them grow a lot faster when there's more heat. So it's not mandatory, but it does help them grow faster as opposed to maybe getting them to feeding size in a month as opposed to a month and a half, two months. So why not, you know, keep the heat in there. So, yeah, I keep the heat around 85, 90. Helps them grow faster. Um, and then uh, at nighttime, I take the heat bulb off because I got to give it to him, just keep his cage around 80 degrees. And that's fine, I mean, because when they're in the wild, there's a natural drop at nighttime. So it gets this cage to about 70 at night, which is fine. Um, I haven't actually, now that I'm looking at it, I don't see any small one dead. Any little baby dead, so that's pretty good. Anyway, yeah, so keep the heat around 85, 90 during the daytime. And at around, whenever you're going to shut your lizard's uh, tank down or whatever, um, just shut, the, shut these guys down too. And that should do it. Um, and then after a month or so... They should be like that, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, like a month and a half, two months. That actually looks kind of big. Like a medium-sized cricket, they should be like a month and a half. And then they're ready to feed to your bearded dragon or leopard gecko, whatever you're feeding. <clears throat> yep, and they're perfectly fine feed your crickets. And then, uh, then you just keep the cycle going if you guys want. But I'm going to stop the cycle because these are going to last me a long time and I'm not going to have any room to put them. So I'm going to stop the cycle. 200 crickets should last me at least a month, month and a half. So that's good. And he's getting older now, so he's not even going to eat a lot of crickets either. He's eating more greens now, so that's even better. But yeah, guys, um, he's in shed right now. That's why he's not really coming up to the front of the cage like he usually is in my videos. But yeah, guys, that's about it. Um, oh, yeah. And another thing is you might want to keep a thermometer in there just to tell the temperature. Like I said, heating is optional, so you don't need it. But I do anyway just to make them grow faster. But yeah, guys, so that's how I keep them alive. If you have any questions or comments, if I left anything out, you need help, uh, please comment below, down there. You can personal message me. I'll be glad to help. Uh, yeah, guys, so... I'll see you guys next time and comment, subscribe.